everyone I've spoken to who's ever done this is always profoundly grateful for the gesture. And the gesture is one that comes from the British Council. It says, we think that you are ready to take on pretty much the ultimate accolade in an artist's life, which is to represent you know, your country at, at the um, Venice Biennial. So I am profoundly grateful to the British Council for this opportunity. Now I'm speaking. I don't feel like I'm speaking to people necessarily or for people, more important. It's not that definition of representationality. I'm of the place. My concerns are formed in that place. And what I'm trying to do is to place those concerns and ideas and feelings and emotions on that platform, in that space. That's it. No more than that. It's a really challenging world at the moment where questions of who belongs where become more pertinent than ever. The safety and the fragility of our societies is paramount. And John is someone who has been so dedicated and so committed to representing voices from across the gamut. His focus has largely been on marginalization, looking at histories of post-colonialization, histories of the empire. And that is what Britishness is about. We are a diverse, complicated society. The work that I've done either with the collective that I was part of for 20 odd years or as an individual has always sort of presupposed a significance to the Sony. We were called Black Audio Film Collective after all, you know. So I've always been um, interested in what one could call the epistemological properties of sound. You know, its, it's ability to offer insight and knowledge and about how and in what ways we should live. You know, so that, that, that was always central, you know. And if you've ever been in a dub space, you'd know what I mean. Many, many, many people of my generation who came of age in the mid to late 70s who found club culture an outlet for identity literally discovered ourselves. So I'm, I'm really interested in trying to find ways of accessing the sonic via visuality. Because the two are not, they're not quite as separate as, as you might think. For instance, you um, walk through the, the show. One of the things you see will be uh, several uh, texts underwater. No dogs, no Irish, no colours. All of these are injunctions which appear to be textual, but they're actually vocal as well. You need to hear what they're saying. If you have uh, followed the work, uh, it's very clear when you walk in that, that nothing's changed. <laughs> I'm still fascinated by the question of the post-war memory and how one salvages, how one interrogates, how one questions it in some way. I've always been interested in the ecological. Hands of Songs has the songs of the humpback whale as its soundtrack, and that's no coincidence. The form tells you everything, really, um, and this form is different from the others. You know, um, I have seven interrelated rooms and spaces, eighth including the outside. When the March on Washington happened, on the day of the March on Washington, major military offensives in Vietnam. <laughs> so I wanted to make a work in which things appear to be self-contained, as they should do, but then to also stress the question of overlap, you know, the question of contamination of bleed and seep. We know that water has memory. <laughs> we know that it has deposits and traces. Feels a little bit like being on a, a canoe on, a, on an immense body of water, a, a kind of Congo River or a, a Mekong, you know. Um, and every so often, as you do, you run out of supplies and, and, and 
And so you stop at villages and ask for help. Um, Freeze was one of the villages we stopped at. Um, and without even necessarily making a big noise, they're like, all right, there you go. <laughs> On your way and good luck. You know, no strings, no questions. On your way. It's made the work what it is. <laughs>